Good day fret friends, we have a fabulous guitar on the bench today. Uh, this is having uh, some great upgrades, but as far as I know, it is a new guitar. And I'm going to show it you. And there you go. It's a Fender Plus Top uh, Strat HSS com um, configuration on the pickups. Humbucker single single, made in Mexico. What a stunning guitar this is to look at. Beautiful, nice weight to it. I do like that. You will notice it has different saddles to regular saddles on it, and um, I'll explain why. And they are the regular saddles, steel pressed Fender. He has gone for the owner of this guitar, has gone for um, Graftech string savers. He asked me if he wanted me to put them on before I bought the guitar, and I thought that'd be a pretty good idea. So he's done that. So, what mods are we doing to this guitar? Well, I've already removed the nut. Uh, that is because the owner wants a black nut on there, so I've chosen a Graftech nut to go on there. So I removed the original. Um, you have to be very careful when you're removing nuts on these guitars, or what, because you could chip or uh, damage the nut area. So what I do is I cut round the area with a uh, Stanley blade, uh, cut into the lacquer each side, and gently tap it out. So that way we don't get no lacquer cracking because the lacquer does go over the base of the nut on these guitars. So um, the nut is in here. We are also swapping out the pickups. I'm hoping the pickups are the right fit. What have we got in here? How's that sealed up? I'm not sure if this is a nut or not. I've not looked. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -da. I've got more stuff delivered. What have we got in here? Yeah, that's the knot. There you go. Blah 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 blah. Graph tape made in Canada. That cost cost a few quid. Let's have a look. That costs twelve pounds, uh, including postage. So twelve quid for that. Blah blah blah. Uh, pickups going in are. I've just noticed configuration on the pickups here, and I'm hoping it's going to be the same. And it's not. Right. The problem with the pickup configuration here is we have a two and a one on the fender. Two screws, one screw. These are a one screw, one screw affair. So if we're not replacing the pick guard, it's going to look a little bit odd. Nothing I can do about that. But these are the pickups that are going in. I don't know what they are. Does it say on the bottom? I know that Oil Cities. Now, I've had some Oil City pickups before. Myself, Ashlet, who owns a company and makes his pickups, he's a cool guy, he makes fabulous pickups. He just says Oil City pickups on there. Oil City, Oil City. So I've got to determine which is middle, which is neck. TB19, is it TB19? Again, TB, I'm not sure. Ah, TB neck, so the next one must be a middle. TB neck. Middle, we know bridges, bridge. Let's have a look inside, see if it says anything. If not, I'll get in touch with Chris and he will tell me what pickups they are. So I'm going to have to let him know about the configuration. Uh, that does alter things slightly. I may need a new pick guard. I do have a mint green pick guard in stock, brand spanking new, which may alter things. Uh, but anyway, let's see where we are. Something else we're going to do is I'm going to put a push push uh, tone pot on here so we can split the coil uh, on the humbucker. So that's another mod we're going for. Uh, I'll be leveling any frets that need leveling. Obviously, we're changing the knots, changing the pickups. We're going to change some of the electrics. Saddles are already done. I'll be giving it a complete setup, complete fret level, and we'll see exactly where we are. So that is the guitar shown to you. I'm just going to let Chris know about the pickup configuration, and whether he wants to change the pick guard or not, and we shall take it from there. A slight oversight. I don't know why Fender do this. Two screws at the top and one at the bottom on their humbuckers, because it means if you're going to change a humbucker, you've got to change the pick guard. Now we're not going to change the pick guard in this instance, we're just going to drill an extra hole for the two point uh, pickups, oil city pickups, 
At least the spacing's gonna be at least the spacing gonna be about right. I think we're gonna be okay. So I'm gonna find out what these oil city pickups are. We're gonna modify the pick guard. I could in effect fill these two holes with some uh, epoxy and uh, slightly tint it with some stain. Uh, I may or may not do that. You know, if it's not gonna take me too long, I might as well do it. So I'm gonna find out what pots are in here. I believe we will have a 500 volume, 250 tone, 250 tone. So I'm gonna see what push, push pots I have in stock. I'm pretty certain I will have 250s and or 500s. So let's just see what I've got. Vaughan's 500, that's a no load pot, no load pot, no load pot. I do have some push pulls knocking about. There they are. Uh, push push, sorry. These are 500k push push. So the reason I like a push push pot is you're not pivoting about with your controls trying to pull something up. You just push and you push. Push, which is in the on position, push off, coil split, push on for full. Uh, that's a 500, we've got 500 logs, 500 tone push pull, 250 log push pull push. So I don't have a push push 250, I may have to go and buy one. And that's a stick of 500 in there, pull push, push pull or pull push, pull push. Do I have a, oh, praise the Lord. I have a 500 push push and a 250 push push. Both alpha brand, decent brand, uh, absolutely fine for these, uh, for what we want to do. I have no problems with using alpha pots. So we've got a 500 and a 250 push push. Um, both tone, so they are both linear rather than logarithmic. So we have what we need. So all we have for me to do now is, I'm going to take the neck off the guitar, we're going to remove the tuners if I need, well, if I'm going to check the frets, in fact I'll check the frets in a minute, just to check the level, so we'll get the neck dead straight, we'll check the frets, once that's done we're going to start taking the guitar apart, um, I'll be looking at what electrics we need, I think first thing we're going to do is check the frets, if we need to do a fret level we will remove the tuners, um, we will remove the neck from the guitar, if we don't need to do a fret level we can leave everything intact, because nothing is going to be in the way. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the pickups away, back in the box. La, da, 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 da. If you don't know Oil City pickups, go and check them out. Um, I have some fantastic Oil City stone tones in my strat. Oil City were a pickup recommended to me by, by my good friend Robert Peach. Uh, I met Robert Peach a few years ago. He was working at his Cotts Case, has been there 30 odd year. He's not there anymore. And um, He's one of my top clients and a very, very good friend. And he sends all of his guitar to me, guitars to me. The first guitar he sent me was a 2005 Les Paul Custom, uh, which I can't remember if I did a refret or I did a fret level for him. The first job I ever did for him. Since that day, since that time, he's always sent, well, I won't say he sent his guitars because he actually drives to Nottingham and we get together and he brings his guitars to me. He put me onto Oil City pickups. He says they are amazing pickups, and he's absolutely right. Uh, made in London by Ashley. Um, they're reasonably well priced. They are handmade to your specification, but he does make he does make sets as well. Um, he will have a pickup. Anything you want, he will have, and he is a fantastic builder. The pristine pickups. I'm going to find out exactly what models these are so I can explain more on the video a little bit later. So what I'm going to do is exactly what I said. I'm going to set the next tray, I'm going to come back, I'm going to bring you in. We're going to check the frets. Once we determine what condition the frets are in, we can take the next steps from there. So give me a few minutes. Um, we're going to get the next tray and I'll bring you back in shortly. So we are slightly beginning to lose the light, but we've still got enough to carry on. Um, right, so I've taken my not straight edge. I buy my tools from GMI, based in Greece. I've seen the guy make these tools, he is precision. They're as good as anything else on the market and they're less expensive. Uh, so my little recommendation for GMI tools there. So we have a notch straight edge, exactly what it says. I was saying straight edge with notches, two different sizes, 24.75 for Gibson, 25 and a half for Fender uh, and all the brands, but they are the main ones. So we put the notch straight edge over the frets. We get the neck dead straight. We have a 530 tooths Allen wrench uh, for a Mexican fender. Uh, I've got the neck dead straight. Uh, I will show this again tomorrow. Um, again, fret rocker from GMI, 
I went and bought a rake of fret rockers last year from Stumac, from World International, uh, from various other places. This is the straightest one and the only one I trust. I actually have two of these. Uh, Harris, the maker, kindly sent me two for the price of one. And uh, they are fantastic little bits of kit. Straightest fret rocker I have ever owned. Anyway, we're going to go across the frets. We'll do three at a time. So we have four different lengths. So we can always do three frets. That end there, that end there. And what happens is if we get a rock, we know that fret is high in that area. Or the middle one, should I say. Otherwise you won't get a rock. Can already hear that one. So I'm just going to slightly mark that, not really makes a difference because I already know that they all want doing. I've been across, there are 11 high frets. So I've already determined that we need a complete fret level. So we will be removing the tuners from the guitar and we'll be removing the neck and we'll be levelling all of the frets. You may or may not hear this, camera's quite a bit away. Two spots on that fret. I mark in areas two being the centre, one being the furthest away, three being the closest to me. One, two, three, just so I know I could write easily write a key if I wanted to. For instance, fret two, no areas, fret three, areas one and two. So I write three at the top and then one or two under it in small letters, small numbers. And that way I've got a key that I understand. So already see we have four high frets, five spots over four frets. To level frets properly, we're always removing knot. As you notice, I've already removed a knot on this guitar. I removed it the other day to measure for a new one. Six, check again. Just checking to make sure I've got the right one. I took my eye off the wall for a second there. Six in two areas. Seven. Again in two areas. So we have nine high frets. I did count ten earlier, but maybe I've missed one on the way up. I will be doing a precision check again tomorrow. This is just to get them marked off overnight. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine frets with high spots we have two on that one 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 so we're going one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen high spots over nine frets i think that absolutely warrants a complete fret level i'll explain why we do a, a complete fret level over just spot leveling them if I spot leveled this one fret here, right, and leveled just that one, it's going to affect two frets this side and two frets this side. 
and so I may have to alter these two again with this one this one this one now if I only have five or four or five across the whole neck I could spot level just level it that way and we'd probably be okay and that would be fine um, but once we get into the realms of doing nine and these nine could affect in effect alter two others around them so nine times four it's 36 more you could be altering now it doesn't actually work out and equate like that because if I'm also that one and that one, each one's not going to affect so many other threats around them when you get a big bunch like this. But it's just so much easier to level the whole lot. Uh, but of course, once we level the whole lot, it means we scratch the whole lot. If we scratch the whole lot, we've got to recram the whole lot. And when we recram the whole lot, we've got to polish the whole lot. Um, I always prefer to do a full threat level over a spot level. A spot level is not quite as accurate. It will get you... 99 98 99 percent level on all the frets but it is not foolproof i always prefer to do a full fret level now when we've got nine frets like this in these areas there's no way you're going to go spot level this you've got to do the lot so that is why we go for a complete fret level now for a complete fret level i charge 85 pounds uh obviously it's not cheap but it does take a while there's three three and a half four hours work in a fret level so i still think it's pretty cheap um, we're also changing the pickles which is going to be 40 quid uh, we're also changing the parts and all the electrics I'll include that in the 40 quid we've got a knot fit we're fitting a knot which is normally 45 quid extra 10 quid for a tremolo so that does mount up it takes you into the realms of I don't know I've not worked it out but you're looking at 190 100, 190 200 pounds for a whole lot I'm not going to do that I've already I always take some off for instance, when like tremolo, I won't charge for tremolo, I won't charge for the knot, so I'm charging for a fret level, for the pickup installation, um, for the electrics being done, and the setup as well. Uh, so normally a setup with a fret level, I charge 115 pounds, and you've got 40 quid for the pickup, so you're looking at 155 pounds. Um, you've got the hardware as well, uh, and the knot. I will charge a bit for the knot. Uh, rather than 45 I charge 15 pounds for it. So you're looking for labour on this. The whole, all of the labour, everything is going to cost you about 175 pounds. You'll be getting a complete setup. The guitar is going to be stripped and rebuilt from the bottom up. We're replacing all of the electrics, the pickups. Um, there will be extra charges for the nut and for the hardware. Like I'll be putting a new pot in there, a brand new uh, nut in there. I think we are looking at about £190 all done on this. Don't forget these videos, by the way. These videos are always for the client. So don't think I'm just talking about money when I'm doing these videos. I had people comment on some of my videos recently saying, why are I always talking about money and what it costs and all this and the other? And why don't you do close-ups of what you're doing? End of the day, these videos are not for YouTube. They are not instructional videos. These are client videos. I always film a guitar from start to finish for the client. That's what these videos are for. So anyway, I've explained what I'm going to do. Uh, to do the fret level, I've got to remove all the tuners and the string tree, I'll be doing that. I'll be removing the neck, um, which makes things a lot easier. Of course, I've only got to remove the pick guard, all of the hardware. We're going to reconfigure uh, all the electrics, install new pickups. As I mentioned, oil city pickups in there. I may have a go at fixing the pick guard, uh, fill these two holes in and drill another one. Uh, but that is much is as much as I am going to do on camera tonight. I may prep the neck ready for a fret level tomorrow. So overnight, I'm probably going to remove these tuners. Um, I'm going to remove the neck from the guitar. Um, I will also remove the pick guard, get the pickups out, and uh, get everything ready for changing everything over tomorrow and at the weekend. Welcome back, fret friends. So. I went and ordered a new scratch plate. Couldn't get it from my regular supplier, so I had to go somewhere else. Uh, it seems to be the perfect fit. It is not a Fender one, but it is uh, supposed to be pretty much exactly the same. I also wanted to make sure I got one with not a square cut out for the humbucker, but a rounded one because it's, these are uncovered pickles. So it looks like it's gonna be absolutely perfect. I think it costs somewhere in the region of £19 delivered, which is not terrible. So, a few things we're going to do. Going to remove the neck. Going to remove all the electrics in the, in the scratch plate. I will be snipping um, whatever wires need to do. In fact, I won't be snipping anything. I will be desoldering 
whatever wires I need to desolder. But first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the neck off. And it doesn't matter if we rub off um, the markings on the frets because I still have the map to the frets here that I mentioned before. So I know which frets need work. And it's going to be done in two separate, there's two separate jobs on this guitar. One is to replace the pickup and the electrics and the other is to level the frets and recrown the polishing. We're also going to install a new nut. Have you got all that? We're going to block off the tremolo. And we're going to give it an intensive setup. So, all pretty straightforward work, but uh, it is time consuming. And we're going to crack on with it today. Just a reminder that we are replacing the pickups. We are installing a, a set of Oil City pickups. Crack out, I thought these were all the way out. Just bear with me, same guys. And um, I'm interested to get inside and to see what value pots we have in there. I do have a 250 and a 500k push push pot. So one of these will be going in. I prefer push push, it's just a matter of dobbing for on or off rather than having to pull something up while you're playing, which can be tricky. So let's get everything in a pot, one pot per guitar, like so, do the same with the rest of the screws. In fact I don't really need to remove that. Most important thing about replacing these pick guards with a non fender pick guard is to make sure that these screw holes line up. And I don't mean line up closely, I mean line up perfectly. If they don't, I'll be sending the pick guard back and I'll be waiting for my regular supplier to have them back in stock, which I've done. I've already waited two weeks, got a little bit impatient, so I thought, you know what, I'll go somewhere else and have a look. I bought that one from Axis or Us. Which I buy a lot of stuff from there, so I never sell good stuff. Should be 11 screws. Eight, nine, ten, eleven in the pot. This should give us enough room to just move it right out of the way like so and we can just stick the new one on there and just have a look at the screw holes and they've got to line up perfectly let's have a look now there's one here that doesn't let's see how many don't that one that one that's fine this one just here, we're going to make a little bit wider. We might just get it in. I really don't like altering these things. I think we are going to be fine. We have got a good line up there. So 
ところ。Four corners in. That's perfect. I like that. So, so far, so good. I'm hoping that goes in somewhere. I think we are going to be absolutely fine with that. This one here doesn't line up perfectly, but if we can, even if we get it in just a little bit skew if, I think we're going to be absolutely fine. Sometimes you've got to pop with it at an angle. Once it's screwed into the hole, we're going to be fine, I think. If we get that one in without it altering anything else. And this one here, again, the same. But all of the rest of them line up really well. Right, I'm happy with that. Not perfectly lined up, but very, very close. We will definitely, it's not a matter of getting away with that, that does work really well. So yeah, very pleased, lines up, lines up. Let's get this one in. Yeah, very happy with all of that. That's wonderful. That's really good. So we know everything is going to work. I'm going to remove those. We've got a desolder, the wires that need desoldering from here. Um, we're going to check the value of this pot, I believe. I should be able to see it on there right now. And it is, well, it's definitely a CTS. Can't quite see the value on there, but what I will do is I will measure it. So, leave this with me. I'm going to get cracking and uh, I will update um, as and when. So, before we start filing and leveling anything, we just check that the neck is straight again, and that neck is as straight as I can get it. And we're going to go across with a fret rocker again using our key. Now, I explained this earlier, this just tells me which frets and which areas of the fret need levelling. I've been across with a fret hammer, not where it makes any difference, and just tapped all the frets where they are high. But this being a lacquered board, the frets are unable to move anyway. But just do that as a matter of course, just to check everything. And I'm going to check the areas again. So we've got frets three, areas one and two. I think that's still high. Fret 5, areas 1 and 3. Fret 7, area 3. Fret 8, area 2. Fret 13, areas 1 and 2. Fret 15, areas 1 and 3. Fret 18, areas 1 and 3. You can just about hear that. Fret 19, area 1. We're a lot, lot quieter now because it's such a smaller area. It's definitely rocking. And fret 21, areas 1 and 2. Yeah, I can hear it. You probably won't. So we have 2, 3. Four, six, seven, eight, nine frets with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, three, fifteen high spots over nine frets. Uh, that is quite a lot. Um, once I'm happy that the neck is as level as we can get it, which it is, you'll notice I've taped up the edges of the fingerboard. Now I can tape up between the frets because I know the neck's straight. Um, can't get it any straighter than that. I know which frets need working on. We are going to level the whole lot anyway. It's just these areas marked off on the map. Um, I will work on first. So I'm going to go and get everything set up. 
get everything taped up. Once it's all done, I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how we spot level. Once we spot level, we're going to level the whole lot. Just to explain this tape again, I put a strip of tape on there because when I tape over this way, when we come to removing it, we just pull this strip and it'll all come off in one go. just makes it a lot easier. So let me go and get set up and um, I'll bring you back in shortly. To quickly show how we're going to level the frets and then I'm going to tie this uh, video up for tonight because it's getting towards 8pm. I was in the office at 7.30 this morning, uh, working for Royal Mail, obviously, as you know. Um, so I'm going to show how I'm going to level with frets. I'm going to use first my Chris Allsop levelling file. It's precision ground flat file, coated, diamond coating, perfectly flat, brilliant piece of kit. I'm going to go across with this, I'm going to spot level all the frets that need the high removing. Get the main off with that, and once that's done, I have my levelling beam back. And this has been into a shop. It's been precision ground again, perfectly flat both sides. One side had gone off, uh, both sides have been redone. Uh, so I'm going to be using this, I'm going to use 240 grit one side, three, uh, 400 grit the other. So I'm going to be main levelling with my steel levelling beam. This is 2b1 uh, steel box section, two edges ground perfectly flat. And um, I think this has been on some kind of CNC type machine, I'm not sure. But when it came out, the guy said it was 0.07 out on one side, 0.02 out on the other. So his ground both surfaces flat again. So I'll be doing the main levelling with this tomorrow. I'll show you how I set that up. And uh, we'll get these frets levelled. I'm back guys. Wednesday afternoon. I'm not fannying about today. Uh, I was going to get my proper levelling beam all taped up. But why bother when I've already got my um, GMI one already to use uh, we have 240 grit that side 320 grit that side um, I'm going to go straight in the frets that need the work I can use my key here or my little mat I don't need to use that because I've got all the frets marked up I'm going straight in with my Chris Allsop designed uh, fret levelling file uh, milled perfectly flat coated with uh, it's a diamond coated file i do believe it's round about 300 grit this removes material and it does not mess about and uh, we're just going to follow the radius i'm going to go over the black bits until we have these frets that need the work level with the others then we're going to come across the whole lot in one fell swoop using the leveling beam uh, basically in short this is 16 inch long it's about 15 mil wide it's got 240 grit on one side, 320 grit on the other, and this way we can level all of the frets together once we remove the high spots with this. So, without further ado, I'm not going to faff about. To follow the radius on these, down the centre you're following the radius area, but when you get to the edges here, you don't follow the line of the guitar, you follow or, or the line of the neck, you follow the radius. So I will be going and I'll be overlapping down here, and that will maintain the radius across the neck which I imagine will be nine and a half inches but anyway without further ado let's get to work and what we're looking for with this is we're looking for uh, less resistance so when I stop getting resistance it means I've got the frets level I'm not pressing down I'm letting the, I'm pressing down ever so lightly but I'm letting the file do the work that may seem quite brutal it's not as brutal as you might think we do need to remove material anyway but what we're going to do is we're going to check the areas on the map just to see if we've got the frets level yet so fret three areas one and three uh, one and two sorry seems pretty good fret five areas one and three seems pretty good fret seven area three 
seems good. 8 area 2, looking good. Fret 13 areas 1 and 2, 15, 1 and 3. I need a bit of work there, a bit of work there, so let's go back. Fifteen, one, three, eighteen areas one and three. I believe this is eighteen. One and three, nineteen area one, twenty-one areas one and two. Okay, so according to that, we now have the frets level. Like I say, this file will remove a lot of material. You do not have to mess about it. You can see what you're doing anyway. I'm just give you a couple. And you can see I'm pressing because it's just moved the whole fingerboard and the whole neck. So same again, we're going to come back in. I'm going to use a non-permanent marker this time. I'm going to mark up the frets, we're going to do the rest with the levelling beam. And just for good measure, after the event I will be coming across with a radius beam. I'll show you what all these different tools are in a moment. What we need to do first is ascertain that all the frets are level with each other. So we've marked up all of the frets. We're now going to go across with the 240 grit, which is the most coarse. And we're just looking a few strokes just to see if the pen comes off in just a few strokes. And already I can see that these frets are all level because all of the black pen is off. Just make sure that side. And that's all of the black pen gone. So we have ascertained that the frets are completely level, and they are, trust me, take my word for it. I do this job virtually every day of my life. So we're going to take the fret rocker, we're going to go across the whole lot. Leveling frets is really easy. It's the rest of the work, that's the time consuming stuff, the crowning, the crowning doesn't take too long, it's the polishing. But I love this work. It's brilliant, it brings me so much satisfaction knowing that I'm sending the guitar back to the client and it's got a perfectly straight neck or uh, with perfectly level frets. And there's no cause for it to come back for at least a couple of years unless the frets have worn down a lot. End of the day, it's not up to me. I can't guarantee the frets aren't gonna wear because I don't put the frets in. You know, if they put 12% nickel silver frets in, they're not going to last too long. It's why I refret with 25% nickel silver. It lasts three times as long. I will get your guitar playing right. And I'm all about necks and frets. It's why I'm fret friend. If your neck's straight and your frets are level, the guitar, no matter what guitar it is, even if it's something like Squire or whatever, it can be a world beater. But if your neck isn't right and your frets aren't level, the guitar will never be any good. So both frets are level. I'm just going to see if I've got a nine and a half inch radius block with sandpaper on it. Seven and a quarter, ten. Bear with me. Sixteen. I've never ever used it. Here we go. Nine and a half. I'm hoping it's going to be a nine and a half radius. It could be a seven and a quarter. Do, 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 right, bear with, bear with. Here we go, nine and a half. Yeah, we are a nine and a half radius. So there you go. Nine and a half radius beam with some 400 grit on there, which is even better than the 300 grit I was going to use. So we'll just clean that off. It's been used a few times this, but it's still good. So we're going to check the radius. So again, non-permanent marker. Why well, keep using the black one? Because we're out of the rest. Let's let's use something we've not used before. Oh, I have a lovely turquoise blue one here. We'll use. I like to use markers one on one. I use one once, and I'll use another colour, then another colour. So I like to try and get them to run out at the same time. Because when I go and buy a pack of six, seven markers, 
I don't want to be just having one colour away, it makes no difference, but I like them to all of them run out about the same time. There you go, a beautiful turquoise blue here, it's like an aqua blue, it's delicious. In my ear, this colour, in fact, I've had my ear all colours, I used to be a punk rocker. So there you go, so we've penned it over, and now we're just going to check the radius. Three strokes and all of the pen is gone. It means the radius is perfect. There is no ink on there. How wonderful is that? So we've maintained the radius. That's fantastic news. So there you go, these frets are now ready to be recrowned. Such an easy job that one. Don't always go this easily and this quickly, but that one is a really easy one. So how wonderful is that? So I'm going to move the camera in a minute, I'm going to get this all prepped ready for crowning the frets. Uh, that takes a little bit longer. Um, and I'm going to get set up and I'll bring you back in. Moving on, crowning. What is crowning the frets? Quite simple. Because we've levelled them, the frets going this way, have now got a flat part across the top where normally it should be dome shaped, which we call a crown. And we have them dome shaped because we want the point of contact along the fret to be quite thin where the string hits it. The wider uh, the point of contact, the more chance you've got of buzzing. So what we need to do is, where we've, level, where we've flattened these and made the tops of them maybe a millimetre, maybe a millimetre and a half or even a bit more wide, we need to make that top thin again. Now to do this, we have a fantastic tool which I bought, I think I bought this about a year ago. It cost me £125 and it is worth its weight in gold. It's called a Z file, and um, that the Z part will become apparent at the moment. What this does is, if you look closely, it has a long cut that's closest to you and a short cut closest to me. And I turn it 180 degrees, and it's the complete opposite: short cut next to you, long cut next to me. And what this does is, this will cut the the fret each side depending on which way I've got it. And it will start to rebuild that crown, but what it won't do is it will not touch the top of the fret. So that will leave a nice thin line, which will be the point of contact between the top of the fret and the, str and the string. And I'm going to show you, it's much easier to show you than it is to tell you. So, only, it's a diamond file, so I need a few strokes. I turn it 180 degrees, go again. And if you look, there's a nice thin line down the centre of that fret, and that is the contact point. And we've rebuilt that crown, just a few strokes. Like I say, it is a diamond file. It will last a long time. And once I've done that, I will take my profiling file, which you see it's already got the grooved cut in there. And it's just a matter of going over, removing any burrs or inconsistencies, just doing the edges again, rounding the edges off. And there you go, we have a perfectly crowned fret. And I'm gonna do this for all of the frets doesn't take long especially with this thing like I say 125 quid this bar was and it's worth its weight in gold again three or four strokes turn it over three or four strokes give it a wipe ready for the next fret back to the profiling file same again you'll see we've got that nice thin line down the center which means we've not touched the top of the fret which means we've lost no height, so we won't get the frets rocking anywhere because we maintain the height, we know the frets are level, so this is going to be maintained all the way down the length of the neck, and it makes a job, it's a really easy job. How good is that? Not difficult at all, is it? In the olden days, we used to do this by hand. We didn't have these Z files and stuff. We used to do it with a three-cornered file, and we do it manually. But there you go, there's three done, and we check the height again. Make sure it's not rocking anywhere, and we go back one, and we'll go forward one. And there you go, you see how it works. We've still got that nice thin line down the centre. Jobs are good, and so I'm going to crack on, get the rest done. Once that's done, we're going to come back, and we're going to start polishing. Leveled the frets, re the frets, we now need to polish the frets. And why do we polish? Well, we polish to remove the scratches we put in there uh, with the leveling and also to bring them to a shine. So how do we do that? Well, I personally prefer to use sandpaper and I will use seven different grits coming from 400 grit here. 
through up to 2000 grit so my grades are 400 grit we've got 600 800 1000 1200 1500 and 2000 each grit getting smoother so we're going from a coarse grit to a super smooth grit and what this will do is we'll remove scratches more and more with each grit of paper uh, by the time we get to a 2000 grit all the scratches will be gone we'll, bring it, we'll be bringing the frets up to a lovely shine once we've done all that we'll do the final polish with some um, super fine or extra fine steel wool it's why I like to take the necks off guitars because when using steel wool you don't want the filings to get in the pickups the pickups being magnetic but anyway really really simple with the 400 grit I'll be wearing gloves for this but with the 400 grit it's just a matter of going over the top removing the deep scratches you only really need to go over the top with the 400 600 and 800 grit when you get to the finer grits get into the corners like so so that's basically it we're just going to go across the top of the frets with the first couple of grits get into the corners as much as we can but we've only really touched the tops of the frets anyway so we don't really need to touch the sides and the bottom corners even though we do touch them but there you go that's already removing scratches as we go so that's a 400 grit i've got seven grits in all to go through plus the steel wall so we've got 21 times eight if i'm correct that gives us 168 different polishers so that is going to take me a while it's uh, it's, it's, it's about as exciting as washing paint dry um, but it's going to take me a while so i'm going to crack on with that and once that's all done uh, once i get to the steel wall stage i'll bring you back in i'll show you the difference between the frets now and the frets then just about finished polishing the frets I've got his last two to do with the steel wool finest grade steel wool I do believe it's called extra fine or super fine the grade on it is zero 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 and all the frets look immaculate the scratch frame is super shiny but his last two to do and I'll just show how we do that and we take our steel wool and it's just a matter of pinching it getting it over the top of the fret Again, on the far side right into the corner near side right into the corner then back again over the top I've already done the bevels I do the bevels first so I go down each side then I come across and we do the tops and the sides last one again over the top far side near side right into the corner over the top and that is the frets done we've gone through seven grits of paper one lot of steel wool they are all finished oh my God. I no longer need to don the glove and we'll just peel off the tape and this is a reason I put a strip down the side of the guitar because that way I can just take the strip from the side lock and it gives us a start and we're able to remove all the paper a little bit easier there you go and that should give us a start everywhere certainly easier doing it this way than any other way we may get a couple of bits left behind we'll sort those out in a minute we'll just take that from the other side but there you go and we'll just do the same this side we'll remove this strip And there you go and these frets look absolutely superb they are beautiful so the neck is more or less ready to go on the guitar I'm going to fit the nut off camera really easy if the nut doesn't fit in the slot I'll sand the edge of the nut until it does and we'll just get it in the slot we'll tidy it up shape the edges um, I'm going to come back tomorrow and show where we are probably have the neck back on the guitar with the nut fitted 
I won't cut my nut slots yet. I'll do that tomorrow on camera. I won't do it tomorrow on camera. I'll do it Friday on camera. I'm getting tattooed tomorrow. I'm having this coloured in. I've got an all day session in Nottingham. So I'll be getting tattooed tomorrow. Uh, all being well Friday. I'll be back and working. And um, so I'll come back for that. Right, for friends, moving on with the guitar. I just want to show that I have blocked off the tremolo as requested by the client. So we have a nice big block that side. Uh, this side, just a couple of business cards taped together. That bridge will not move. I've tightened the springs up really tight as well. And uh, the bridge is slightly raised about a millimeter and a half on this side, just to accommodate the correct height for setting the action. Uh, that will not move. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the strings on. We're gonna set the radius um, on the saddles. We're also going to set the intonation right on the saddles. Once that's done, we'll commence with the setup. We'll get the um, right amount of relief in the neck. We'll set the radius, we'll do the intonation. Then we'll cut the nut slots after we've got the strings on. Uh, once that's all done, the guitar will be ready to go. So let me just finalize a few things here and there. Um, I've also got set pickup heights, blah, blah, blah. Just want to get a couple of things done off camera and I can come back, show you what I've done and show you how we go on about completing the setup, so stay tuned, I'll be back soon. Not slightly losing the light, but that's just tough. Uh, we are heading or hurtling towards winter, uh, so the nights are drawing in. So let me just explain from where we were last time. So, last time we'd got the tremolo blocked and just about set where we needed it. I've put the strings on, we're tuned to pitch more or less, very close. What I've done since you've been away is I've checked the relief in the neck, which was pretty okay. I've done the height on the first and sixth strings, um, getting us where I wanted. And I've now tuned the guitar to pitch and I've done the intonation. What I haven't done is I've not set the radius and I've not set the um, truss rod just yet. The more I bring the guitar to pitch, the more relief we have in the truss rod. So I'm just gonna slightly tighten the truss rod because I'm gonna get it to where I need it to be. And to do that, I need to move a couple of strings out of the way, if I can. Not always possible, but we're going to take the truss rod, 3 16th adjuster, it should be on a Mexican. Remember, we had it loose, so we're just going to tighten just a couple of quarter turns here. Maybe half a turn, I don't know, I wasn't watching. But let's have a look, see where we are. Okay, we've gone too much, which is fantastic, so we're going to go back a little. We're just about central there. I'm just going to have a quick check with it as it is. Mm, that's pretty close to where we need to be. Let's get it straight up there. And I think that is pretty close. Let's always remove that. Otherwise, we're going to have problems. So like I say, I've set the intonation. The intonation, for those of you who don't know, we have a string length. Nut to saddle. Halfway is the 12th fret. So the scale length is double this. So to a 12th fret and double, in this case, a Fender guitar 25 and a half, in, 12, 25 and a half inches, but sometimes we need to move the saddle forwards or backwards to get the intonation set. Now the intonation is the harmonic and the 12 fretted note being the same pitch as the open note. So you've got open. Let's just show you, for instance. That's an E, just about. Play the harmonic. Not quite an E, it's a bit flat. Might be an idea to plug an actual guitar lead in there. Makes things a little bit easier. Rather than faffing about. I don't know all the technical terms of intonation, but let's see where we are. Right, that's saying we are tuned to E, which we are. Harmonic and the 12th fretted note, and we are in E. Now, if we were flat, we have to move the saddle shorter. I always remember flat and left. So you move the saddle to the left if you're flat, you move the saddle to the right if you're sharp. Sharp and right are five letters, flat and left are four letters. So if your fretted note is flat, you move the saddle to the left, or in this case, toward the headstock. If a note is sharp, you move it right, or which is toward the end of the body. So that's where I remember. So we're just going to check it why it's here. So let's just check the A. It's pretty good. Right, tiny bit 
flat. There you go. Pretty good. Now what I've not done I've not stretched the strings in yet so it won't hold perfect tune just yet So the intonation is now bang on, but what we've not done is we've not set the radius on the middle four strings. So we're gonna to have to do that now. Now I'm just gonna check the height of the strings, the first and the sixth, because until we've got these right and we've got the relief right, there's no point doing anything else. So the relief, I'm looking at about 0.25 millimeters under the seventh fret. I'll just have a quick eyeball there. Mm, looks might be a bit, little bit low, but let's try. Now we're touching there. 0.25 under the fifth. Let's try the sixth, and that's perfect. We're just touching, so we have a relief set superbly. So I need to check the string height at the 12th fret on the bass side. I'm looking for 1.75. That's 1.8. Looking for 1.5 on here. That is 1.5. So we're Pretty good, pretty happy with that. Just going to check the base side again. So this is a gap from the top of the fret to the bottom of the string. 1.5 millimeters on the first string, or the thinnest string. We're looking for about 1.75, 1.8 on the fattest or sixth string. So I'm just going to check that again. Could go a tiny bit lower on the base. No, I'm happy with that, 1.8, that's fine. It's absolutely fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the radius to match the radius of the fingerboard. So we're going to get some radius gauges out and how we do that is check a radius gauge is it i think it's nine and a quarter it is nine and a quarter nine and a quarter radius gauge these go under the strings we'll just check the neck to make sure it's nine and a half it is nine and a half so what we're going to do is we're going to set the radius at the bridge to match the neck now what we need to do is we need to raise these a little bit higher and the two outside strings so we can drop them onto the top of the radius gauge or the arc of the radius gauge so that was higher that one's higher so really really simple now obviously we're going to knock the guitar out of tune okay that's pretty good we're looking pretty good so all of these four middle strings are now higher than they need to be and we're going to lower them down and drop them we're going to try and keep these saddles horizontal. Now we're not going to make them into an arc. We're going to keep them horizontal because that's the correct way to do it. So two outside strings are fine. So we're going to drop each string onto the radius gauge. And once it just rests on there, that's where we need to be. So that one's resting, that's good. Don't worry about these saddles being skew if at the moment. We'll sort that out in a moment. Really easy to sort that out. lowering each one of these strings onto the top of the radius gauge I'm really happy with that that's perfect and then I'm just going to eyeball that these saddles are straight and they're not this one for instance is well skewer so what we're going to do is if we turn this down a quarter on that side we're going to turn it up on this side the same amount until it's level which it now is we're going to go up a little bit more on that down a little bit more on that side If it will let me sometimes you go a little bit weird so that was pretty good and i'm just very slightly adjusting so this one's high on one side so we're going to bring it up 
quarter of a turn and drop it down a quarter of a turn on the opposite side and that's my level and this one again we're going to drop this about a sixteenth of a turn bring it up a sixteenth of a turn on the opposite side and these saddles are now all more or less horizontal which is how they should be and we should still be matching the rates. I will check it again obviously And that looks pretty good to me. Very tiny adjustments. We'll take the radius gauge again. Make sure we've got the right one. Seven and a quarter. That's the wrong one. Nine and a half. Here we are. Under the strings. Right up to the bridge. Pretty good. What we've gone a little bit lower on one, which will bring it up, up a tad. And I'm happy with that. So the radius on the bridge here now, the radius there matches the radius on the neck. So we're going to check the action again. There's one more thing we're going to need to do in a minute, and I'm sure you can guess what we need to do. Right, we've got a lovely action there, 1.8 and 1.5, absolutely perfect. So we now have, we've set the action at the 12th fret, we've got strings where we need to be, 1.5mm there, 1.8mm there. We have a radius now set on the saddles, we know the intonation's right, the action's good, we've got the right amount of relief in the neck, so there's one more thing to do, and that is to cut the nut slots, which is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to do it tonight, I'm actually going to do it in the morning. Uh, or when I finish my shift at Royal Mail at lunchtime tomorrow. But that is all I need to do. Now, when I cut the nut slots, we're going to drop the action a tiny, tiny bit here. But what I'll do then is I'll raise the bridge ever so slightly. So more on that tomorrow when I come back. It is nipping on a little bit. It's gone a little bit dark. It's 6 p.m. I've got to get ready. I'm going out tonight with the wife. We're going to have a couple of beers at our local because our local pub's just reopened after being closed for lockdown. It's had a full refurb. And now we have a table booked for 7.30. So I'm going to go and get ready. We're going to enjoy ourselves. And uh, I will come back tomorrow and we'll finalise this setup. We'll get the nut slots cut. We'll set the action again at the 12th fret by probably moving the bridge. And the guitar will be ready to go. But what a stunning guitar this is. It looks fantastic. I'm sure the um, Oil City pickups are going to be fantastic. And um, come back tomorrow and you'll find out for yourselves, won't you? So, see you soon. Right, friends, I'm afraid I nipped on a bit with the guitar because uh, I wanted to get it done and um, when I finished work today I just wanted to crack on with it so I have cut the nut slots using my Hosco files which I've shown before um, it's not a great, it's not a difficult job so you can always check some of my earlier videos and find out but let's recap what we've done to the guitar so it came in we needed to upgrade the pickups we put some Oil Cities in there I do not know which model Oil City pickups they are uh, but they are Oil City pickups, two single coils and a humbucker. Just going to alter the pickup height just a little while I'm talking to you. Um, it became apparent that we needed to do a fret level. There were, was it something like 15 high spots over nine frets or something like that? And um, so it's had the works, it's had a complete setup, complete rewire, uh, new pickups installed. I've also a push push coil split on there. We removed the super switch, put a normal oak grease uh, five way switch in there. I put the coil split on the push push pot. I love push 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 push. Uh, for tone on this, middle tone is neck and middle. Uh, this tone, this is just a tone for the bridge with a push push for a coil split. It will cancel out this coil. Um, a brand new uh, Graftec nut on there. Super neat, and like I say, complete fret level, recrown and polish. Every nut and bolt has been checked and tightened. I've also blocked off the tremolo, as you can see there. Stuck a fret fret bit of fret fret card in there. Uh, free advertising. And um, I don't think, did it come with a back plate? I'm just going to have a look in the box if it came with a back plate, because if it did, I need to put that back on. But for all intents and purposes, this project is finished and this is the last one I've got in at the moment. I've not taken anything in because I'm going to have a little break for a couple of days. Because um, I want to work on some of my own guitars. I do have some coming in. I've got one coming in tomorrow I believe. 
and maybe another one on Monday. Let's have a look in there. Yes, there is a back plate in there. Ah, oh, right, with it, he's not using it because it's got a fender sticker on. There you go. So, I'd imagine the owner doesn't want that on, so I'll remove the cut the uh, prep frame card from there. Because it's only going to fall off anyway. There you go, so you can see how I blocked it off. Nice block in there, a couple of bits of uh, business card just to trap everything, tighten the springs right up. So the bridge basically is now a stop tail. It is slightly raised because uh, that's where it needs to be for the action to be right. But the action is nice and low on this. Everything's done, completely set up. Radius on the saddles, intonation, correct height at the 12 fret. Nice little bit of relief, 0.25 mm thick fret. Nice low graph tech knot in there. All the nuts and bolts have been tightened, checked, tightened where needed, and blah, 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 blah. And it's all done. So one thing for me to do, that's to remind you of my website, which is Fret friend, uh, facebook.com forward slash ng17. That's facebook.com forward slash ng -E 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 There's also fretfriend.co.uk, but that is it. The project is finished. So until the next time, as always, God bless you. Be good to each other. And I'll see you in the next one.